Hey, David Bruce here with an episode of Chord Play, and this is a jazz guitar primer. And I've been teaching guitar for a very long time. I started when I was in high school, and I was about 17 when I started teaching, like, professionally. And uh, over the years, I've had tons of rock and metal students. I've had some blues students, and I've had acoustic and country and folk and all these different styles. And I have had jazz, you know, minded or interested students that were interested in listening to jazz. But the typical, you know, way that a student is usually asked is they come in and they're like, you know, show me some jazz chords or can we work on some jazz stuff? Because typically it's, you know, a blues guitarist or a rock guitarist that kind of hears these tonalities and these different chords and they get interested and they're like, well, what's that? And jazz tends to confuse people that are not, you know, jazz musicians. You know, your average blues or country or rock, you know, musician, when they hear jazz, it confuses them because it's a different approach, it's a different style of music, obviously. But I guess the big thing in jazz that confuses everybody is, you know, in folk and country and rock and pop and all these different styles of music, funk, um, typically, you know, the progressions, you know, kind of lock into a certain key or tonality, um, normally dominant seventh or maybe minor seventh chords, and you know, the three or four chords with one scale kind of approach, which comes from blues. But with jazz, um, the door is wide open. You can play anything. You can use, you know, different chords from other keys. You can, uh, you know, use chord substitutions, basically. Um, there's extensions and all these wild, you know, tonalities that float around in jazz. So really, in jazz music, it's just freeform. You can basically do, you know, whatever you want. But there is a structure and kind of an approach to playing jazz. You can't just pick up an instrument and just start blasting, you know, whatever you feel like. You do still have to fit within, you know, the rules of the game or, you know, the style. But uh, it is a really different approach and it confuses people pretty quick. So this is just going to be kind of a primer. We're going to talk about some chords. We're going to get into seventh chords and some progressions. And then at the end, I'm going to show you a very famous uh, jazz standard. Okay, the first step here would be to learn more about seventh chords and what they are, where they come from, and then how you can kind of find them and map them out on the fretboard. So if we just take a C major scale, and we grab the first, third, fifth, and seventh notes of that scale, which would be C, E, G, and B, those four notes combined would create a C major seventh chord like this. And for a lot of people, as soon as they hear major seventh chords, they think of jazz and they're like, oh, that sounds jazzy. And it does. But you'll find, you know, major seventh chords in rock and metal and folk and classical and, you know, other styles of music too. But most people, when they hear it, they're just hardwired and they think jazz. But you can find that in lots of songs. So that's our first uh, shape right there. We're not really going to worry about open position because you really don't find jazz guitarists playing, you know, this shape. It's more common to hear this. The second most common shape would be here. And you could also refinger that like this. And then the third shape would be up here. So there are our three most popular, you know, fingerings for a major seventh chord. This. This. And this. And this shape is interesting because we can bar it across like that. Or you can also kind of slip your index finger and do a crossbar. And there I'm grabbing C on the low E string and I'm grabbing B on the high E string, which is the seventh. And that's definitely a jazz approved you know, voicing. That sounds you know sounds really good. So there's our major seventh chords. If we take that C major 7 and lower the 7th, which is B, if we lower that down to a B flat, then we're going to have dominant 7 or C7. You know, that's a very common, you know, shape. The other fingering here would be right here. And then the third shape would be right here. You know, we just lowered that B to B flat right there. 
I'm on a seventh chord and lower the third, which is this E note, and we lower that to E flat, now we're going to have minor seventh. So there's C minor seven. Here's C minor seven. And typically in jazz, they, I mean, they will use that shape, but they usually kind of revert it to this fingering, where you're kind of doing almost like a overlap with your fingers, and you're barring the eighth fret there on the D, G, and B, skipping the A and grabbing the root on the low E. So with that shape, we're not really worried about the A or the high E. So it's just kind of a four note, four note fingering. And then the last shape there for C, you know, C minor seven right there. Once you have those three different types of seventh chords, you know, under your fingers and kind of under your belt, and you're learning, you know, where you can play them and kind of arrange those chords on the fretboard, the next step would be to learn about the jazz progression. Now in blues and rock and folk and funk and country and all these different styles of popular music, uh, the blues progression seems to be the most popular and most commonly played. And that would be the first, fourth, and fifth chords of whatever key you're in, you know, a one, four, five. So in the key of C, if we change all those chords to a dominant seventh, which is typical in blues, you know, we'd have C7, F7, and G7 really common sound and there's a million ways you could arrange those three chords and play it on the guitar I mean you could do something like this used, but more often than not, and you know, kind of the jazz progression as it's nicknamed, is a 2-5-1, and that's where we play the second, fifth, and first chords of whatever key we're in. So in the key of C, using, you know, different types of seventh chords, we would have C, I'm sorry, D minor 7, G7, seven, or G dominant 7, and then C major 7, and there's our 2-5-1. Okay, and if you notice, we're actually using all three types of the seventh chords that we looked at previously. You know, minor seven right there, dominant seven right there, and then major seventh right here. And there's a bunch of different ways uh, we can kind of arrange those chords. So that would be the first step there. higher on the fretboard we can grab D minor 7 right here and then G7 and then C major 7 and we can even grab a higher version way up here you know there's D minor 7 right here there's G7 and C major 7 and there's a ton of different ways we can mix and match those chords um, here's another variation. We could do D minor 7, and then we can change that G7 to a G9, which is really common, and then uh, end on C major 7. Or we could actually end on a higher C major 7. We could do, you know, D minor 7 here, G9, and C major 7. So there's a ton of different ways you can mix and kind of combine uh, those chords on the fretboard and that's really cool it kind of opens up you know your eyes to different ways of arranging uh, these chords here's another way we can mix these chords together so now what we're going to do is combine the one four five that we hear in blues and rock and the two five one that we typically hear in jazz and we're going to mush those together and this is really common you know in different styles of music it's not just a jazz thing or a rock thing or a blues thing this is kind of everywhere but now what we're going to do is we're going to play a 1, 4, 2, 5. And, you know, we're still technically playing a 2, 5, 1 in a different order. And we're technically still playing a 1, 4, 5, but we've included, you know, that 2 or the second. But that would be, you know, C major 7, F major 7, and then D minor 7, there's the 2, 
and then the five would be G7 or G dominant seven. Really typical sound. You know, it's got a good ring to it too. There's a ton of different ways we can arrange that. You know, we could use this C major 7, and then F major 7, D minor 7, to G7. And, you know, once again, we can start exploring all those different versions of uh, seventh chords and starting to combine them together. But that's, you know, really has a jazzy flavor to it because we start with two major seventh chords. You know, C major 7 and F major 7. And then it kind of shifts to the minor 7 and dominant 7. So it has a nice ring to it, for sure. And once you start really kind of exploring these chords and combining them and you're learning, you know, different ways of arranging and kind of hitting progressions in a different way and the chord voicings in a different way, um, there's some really crafty things you can do, and jazz guitarists do this all the time, where they find these kind of streamlined, you know, ways of arranging chords when they're comping, or just, you know, kind of playing rhythm, basically. And uh, it's kind of a jazzy term, you know, comping chords. And it really just means you're playing rhythm and playing, you know, a sequence of chords, and you're doing something rhythmic, you know, with those chords. But, um... What we're going to look at here is we're going to start way up here with C major 7, then we're going to grab F major 7, and then the highest note of that F major 7 chord is that C right there. And then when we change the D minor 7, which I'm going to put right there, we're going to include that C note that we had with, C major, or with F major 7. So your ear kind of hears that connection between F to D minor 7 because it has that shared kind of mutual note. And then it's going to move back to G7 right here. And then at the very end, we're going to end with C major 7 like that, which is really different. But you'll hear how the, the upper note, that top note, is kind of moving and kind of blurs from chord to chord. And you hear that connection like this. So there was the C major 7. F major 7, D minor 7, G7, and then C major 7 right there. So a really different way of thinking of those chords, and we're kind of playing with that, you know, the C and the B on the top. As promised, I'm going to break down a very famous uh, jazz standard. And this is the song Little Sunflower, which was written and recorded by Freddie Hubbard. And this appears on his 1967 album uh, Backlash. And this is a bona fide, you know, jazz standard. You can find it in the real book. You can hear dozens, if not hundreds, of covers and recordings and versions of this, you know, through the years. And um, I'm going to play through just kind of a, you know, solo version of it so you can kind of hear it. And keep in mind, I don't have drums and bass and piano and horns behind me, so I'm going to fill it out a little bit and add some bass notes and kind of comp it up a little bit. Uh, something like this. first section again. So it's a three chord song and we're going to start the first part in D minor 7. And I was just adding those little bass notes to kind of, like I said, fill it out a little bit. But then the 
melody itself, um, you know, it's right here. Like that. And that's basically uh, D Dorian is kind of where that's coming from. shift and it's going to basically move from D minor 7 to E flat major 7. You know, it's really obvious, it's very, you know, it stands out when you hear that shift in the progression. And then it's going to basically move down to D major 7. So that E flat major 7 kind of just shifts down a half step. So if you basically look at a B flat major scale, we're basically flirting with the third and the fourth. You know, that D minor seven would be the third chord. You know, in the key of B flat major, and then E flat major seven would be the four chord in a B flat major. So that's kind of a modal progression. You know, we're we're kind of dipping into the third and fourth of a B-flat major, but there is no B-flat major chord in the song. It's really just that trio of chords, you know, D minor 7, E-flat major 7, D major 7. And then when it goes to that D major 7, that's just kind of a substitution, or it's, you know, moving to the parallel major of D minor. That's one way you can kind of think of it, because it really is just kind of fitting, you know, the, the square peg in the round hole. But it sounds good. It has that really nice kind of flow to it. You know, really cool. And to really kind of, you know, understand that song a little bit better, you know, if you analyze the melody. You know, that's all targeted over D minor 7. And then when you hear that noticeable shift, um, he's signaling that, you know, in the melody. clever the way you kind of hear all uh, those half step movements into the next chord and it kind of sets up you know and your ear catches that too where it's like hey I think I hear you know where this song's gonna move to really interesting jazzy sounding too of course that's going to wrap this look at the you know jazz guitar primer and there's only so much i would be able to cram in a 15 to 20 minute you know video like this um you know jazz music something you can study for years and decades um you know just kind of chipping away at that giant mountain of music and it's complicated you know it's not easy you know there's a reason why a lot of people are scared away from jazz because they realize they really need to know what they're doing. They can't just wing it, you know, and start playing like Chuck Berry licks or something. It's like, no, that's never really going to sound good over a jazz song. You have to really navigate, you know, the key and the progression. It's using modes and there's, you know, all sorts of things happening. You know, key shifts and there's parallel major and minor shifts and there's substitutions and all sorts of things happening. So it's complicated. And uh, depending on how the feedback and the requests and comments on this lesson are, um, I can definitely kind of keep, you know, moving forward. And I'm not really sure, you know, what the viewers out there are going to think about jazz. You might think, yeah, or you might think, no, I don't want to, I don't want to go down that road. I love jazz though. I think jazz is really interesting. Anytime I feel kind of burned out, I'm like, well, I'm listening to the same old music. I'm listening to a lot of rock or a lot of metal or funk or whatever. As soon as I move over to jazz, it's it's refreshing. It's like, okay, cool. I'm kind of cleaning my palate or, you know, kind of washing the dirt from rock and blues and stuff off of me where it's like, okay, yeah, this is, you know, a nice change. So anyway, leave some feedback and some comments. Please subscribe to Late Night Lessons, and I'll be back before you know it with more content and material. Thank you.